buttons to the spine, knees hip width apart. So you're lengthening up. Pull that belly button spine, gently tuck your tailbone under, shoulders down your back pocket. So you've got that neutral spine. We're just going to start with a few squats and then we're going to turn it into squats with an arm circle. So you can run your hands down your thighs, sitting into your seat and push into your heels. So we're just going to do some squats. Only if you want to, you can lengthen your arms out in front. I, the further you lengthen your arms out in front, the deeper you can get your squat. So I'm sitting into my seat, chest out to the side, shoulders down my back pockets, nice straight back. Only if you want to, you can hold on to your thighs. Now we're going to sit into our seat, lengthening our arms forward, and then a circle, arm circle. Sitting into my seat, lengthening my arms forward, and arm circle, squeezing your shoulder blades together, opening up your chest. The further you lengthen your arms out in front, the deeper your squat. Push your knees together, sit into your seat. Remember, you can slide your hands down your thighs, then do an arm circle, or you might want to just lengthen your arms out in front. So I'm really firing up my glutes, my quads, opening my chest, squeezing my shoulder blades together. We'll just do one more, just warming up, getting everything mobilised. And back to centre. We're just going to do neck flexion. So we're going to gently hold on to our head and tilt it to the side. You're going to now puff. Can you see I'm pushing into my palm? So I'm gently tilting my head to the side, pushing into my palm, and I can feel a deep stretch in the muscles in the side of my neck and on the top of my shoulder. Really relax and back to centre. On the other side, I'm just going to gently put a little bit of pressure, just the weight of my arm, feeling a deep stretch in the muscles in the side of my neck and my shoulders, and I'm pushing into my palm. Pushing my palm down to the floor, shoulders down my back pockets, chest out to the sun. And back to centre. So we're just going to do a couple of balances, dumb waiter. So hold on to your tray of drinks, elbows tucked into your ribcage. Put your, just step your right foot forward. Take a little bit of pressure out to your toe. And we're going to open up our tray of drinks. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Only if you want to, you can have some weights in your hands. Or you choose the arm that the leg position that's good for you. Squeezing your shoulder blades together, open up and opening up your chest, just mobilizing the shoulders and balancing at the same time. So we're layering our exercises. Squeezing your shoulder blades together, elbows tucked into your rib cage. Choose the leg position that's good for you. Pull the belly button spine, lengthen up. We're going to swap legs, left leg. Just take a little bit of pressure out your big toe. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, open up your chest. Or you might want to float up your legs. This is called Cray. Squeezing your shoulder blades together, open up your chest. Or you might want to lengthen out your leg in front. Total stability, I'm wobbling all over the place. And back to centre. And just shake it out. We're just going to do a leg shaper and then a lunge. So you either hold on to your hips, and I'll take you through the progressions. So we're going to come onto our tiptoes. We're going to slide our shoulders down the wall. We're not leaning forward. We're sliding our shoulders down the wall. Pull your belly button to the spine. Just come to a point that's good for you. And back to centre. Soles your feet. Tiptoes. Sliding your shoulders down the wall, knees, push your knees together slightly, you don't want to flare them out. Slide your shoulders down the wall and back to centre. Only if you want to, you can lengthen your arms out in front. Sliding your shoulders down the wall, shoulders down your back pockets, chest out to the sun. Soles your feet. Tiptoe, so you might come down by a couple of centimetres, you might be able to come a little bit deeper. Don't flare out your knees, shoulders down your back pockets. Can really feel that in the quads now. Good. Pull that belly button to the spine, tiptoes, sliding my shoulders. Remember, you can hold on to your hips if you want to. Sliding my shoulders down. Let's be the final one. Can really feel that in the quads. And back to centre. 
You're going to come onto your mat. We're going to do a lunge. So I'm going to step my right foot back, knee stacked in my ankle. So you might do a little lunge, lunge, tucking your tailbone under, lengthening up, shoulders down your back pockets. I can really feel I'm opening my hip flexor, but some of you might be, do, be able to do a deeper lunge. Shoulders down your back pockets, pull your belly button spine. Just come to the level that's good for you. So we're going to lengthen our arms up to the ceiling. Out to T. My left foot is stepped forward, so my right arm lifts up and over. And I'm lengthening my arms away from each other. Shoulders down your back pockets. Pull your belly, pull your belly button to the spine. I'll show you from here. So lateral side bend. Keep those arms nice and straight. Feeling a deep stretch in my waist, my hips back to T. Cross your arms. Your hands stay at shoulder height. Now rotate to the right. No stays between your chest. Shoulders down your back pockets. Remember, I'm doing a deep lunge here, but you might have a slightly shallower lunge. Back to centre and over to the left. No stays between your chest. I'm being pulled by a piece of string. Feel that in your waist and back to centre. Either hold on to your thighs, step forward, or pretend you're holding on to something and step forward. We do the other leg. So I'll step my left foot back. Knees stay stacked over my ankle. Tuck the tailbone under. Pull the belly button to the spine. Shoulders down your back pockets. You lengthen your arms up to T. Up to the ceiling, to T. I've set my right foot forward. So left arm reaches up and over. So some of you might be doing a deeper lunge. Push into your back heel. Feel you're opening your hip flexor. Lengthen your arms away from each other. And I'm flexing over to the side. Feeling a deep stretch. My hip flexors, my waist, really feel that deep stretch, back to T, cross your arms, elbows in line with your shoulders, rotate to the right, no space between your chest, lengthen up, pull the belly button to the spine, remember I have got a deep lunge here, you can have a much shallower lunge and over to the left, no space between my chest and this rotation of my upper spine, pushing into my back heel, squeezing my glutes and back to center. Hold on to your thigh, step forward, or pretend you're touching, holding on to something in front. Oops, and step back, not like me. And then just shake it out. So you should feel just warmed up, a bit more flexible. We're gonna come down to the mat, step forward. Actually, I'm gonna turn off the heater. We're on the mat and we're going to do our normal tricep, our spine stretch, working our tricep. So we're lengthening up. I've got a black band. You might have a lighter band or you might have weights in your hands as well or nothing at all. So we're stretching our spine with a straight band. So we're lengthening up, shoulders down our back pockets and we're hinging at the hips. Flex your feet, elbows tapped into your rib cage. You're being pulled by a piece of string. I'm keeping a nice flat back, straight back, sticking out my tailbones, elbows tucked into my ribcage, and I lengthen my arms behind. Really feeling that in the triceps, feeling a deep stretch in the muscles in the back of my legs, and then elbows tucked into your ribcage. C curve your spine back to center. Do one more, or two more, lean forward. And feel the length coming from your hips, but I'm being pulled by a piece of string, but feel the length coming from your hips. Flex your feet. Feel, really flex those feet, feeling the deep stretch and the muscles in the back of the legs. Elbows tucked into your ribcage and lengthen your arms behind. I'm holding it for two to three seconds, but you might want to stay down there a lot longer. Lengthen and lift of those arms. Really work your triceps. Back to centre. Do one more. Lengthen forward. Hinge at the hips. I'm being pulled by a piece of string. Elbows tucked into the ribcage. Lengthen and lift those arms behind. Really feeling that in the triceps. Lengthening from the hip joints. And being pulled by a piece of spring, elbows tucked into your ribcage. And back to centre. We're going to drop the band. We're going to do something slightly different today. So I'm late. We're still stretching our spine, straight spine. Our hands are just resting on the side. And we're going to walk our bottom back. And keeping a straight back. And can you see I'm walking my bottom back? And it really helps 
you lengthen through the hip joints. I'm walking my bottom back. So I'm stretching my spine. Can you see my hands not moving? And I'm lengthening my spine forward as I walk my bottom back. Feeling a really deep stretch through the spine. Walk back as much as you can and then see care of your spine and back center. So that really helps you lengthen through the hip joints. We're gonna come forward and we're gonna slowly roll down. So we do this every week. So you choose whether you want the assistance of the band. You might want to put a little cheat cushion under your lumbar spine. So quite often when you roll down, it's your lumbar spine where there's a curve. You cannot get those, if your spine's not flexible enough, you cannot get those vertebrae onto the mat. So you fall like that. So it's good to have a cheap cushion or a towel. So level one, two, or three. You don't want to see your elbows if you're at level two or three. So I'm going to start at level two. Relax the feet, relax the legs, lengthen up. So we lean back by an inch, straight back. Then I'm tucking in my pelvis, C curve in my spine. Relax the feet, relax the legs. So I suggest anyone with any lumbar spine issues, you roll down with the band and you put the lumbar, you put the little cheat cushion underneath your lumbar spine. Remember, you're scooping your pelvis, pulling your belly button spine as much as you can, opening up those elbows. Relax the feet, pull the belly button to the spine. Scoop that pelvis. We're going to slowly roll down. Keep the elbows open. If you want to come up a level, level three. But I'm trying to hit every single vertebrae on the mat. Relax those feet, pull the belly button spine. Breathe. Really feeling that in my... Deep core muscles now. Slowly roll down. And then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. Remember, you, if you can cross your ankles and pull your knees apart, it just deepens the stretch in the muscles in the lumbar spine. Some of you might want to go a little bit further and lengthen those legs over your head. Only roll onto your shoulders and not your neck. Or some of you might want to lengthen and lift your arms up to the ceiling and lengthen and lift your shoulders. A little bit more core work at the same time, but stretching. Now keep on hugging the left leg, lengthen the right leg away. Lengthen through the hip joint. Hug the knee to the chest and really relax. Lengthening through the right leg so you can really relax these muscles to deepen the hip flexor stretch and feel the stretch in your glutes. Bring your knee slightly out to the left, thigh skims your ribcage. Hold on to your calf muscle or your hamstring, hamstring, calf muscle, your ankle, and lengthen your leg up to the ceiling, pushing into the heel. So as I will say, some of you, your sweet spot might be here, might be a bit deeper. Just come to the level that's good for you. You want to feel comfortably challenged and start circling the ankle one way and then the other. Really relax the muscles. Really relax so you can deepen the stretch. Bend the knee, lengthen this away, bring up the opposite knee, right knee. So I'm lengthening, keep on relaxing and lengthening through the hip joint. Really relax, hugging the knee to the chest as much as you can. Relax, relax. And bring the right knee out to the side. Thigh skins your rib cage. Hold on to your hamstring, calf muscle, your ankle. Lengthen your leg up to the ceiling. Just your sweet spot might be here, that's okay. Don't force it, you want to feel comfortably challenged. We're just warming up, so you don't want to overdo it. So you surf your ankle one way, and then the other. Really hugging that length and leg to the chest. Bring your knee to tabletop. Tee your arms with or without weight, so my shoulders are glued to the mat, and I'm just floating up those weights. A little bit of bicep work. Bring your knee across your body. Your sweet spot might be at 40, 50 degrees. You might be able to come a little bit deeper. Lengthen through the shoulder joints. Look in the opposite direction if you can. Shoulders stay glued to the mat. Only if you want to, you can lengthen out that leg, but you don't want any pressure in the lumbar spine. Really relax, lengthen through the hip joint. Lengthen the leg or the bent knee back centre, but we're really relaxing the muscles because you can really feel is your deep core muscles, I'm relaxing the muscles of my leg. Make sure it's your deep core muscles doing the work. And we swap over. Bring your knee across your body, look in the opposite direction if you can. I can feel this side is tighter. 
Shoulders stay glued to the mat. Relax that leg. Only if you want to, you can extend the leg. So I'm lengthening through the shoulder joints, lengthening through the hip joint. Take a breath in as you breathe out. Either bring your lengthened leg or bent knee back centers. Completely relax. I'm pulling my belly button spine, melting my rib cage into the mat. And then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. The next exercise we're going to do is just classic dead butt. So you might have weights in your hand or you might have a resistance band in your hand and your soles, your feet can be on the mat or up to tabletop progression. So it's classic dead, dead bug when we lengthen opposite arm and leg away from each other. So soles, your feet on the mat or up to tabletop. Now I've got, you can have weights or you might want a band. So you choose what's more comfortable for you. Arms stay lengthened up to the ceiling, hardly any pressure under the soles of my feet. Don't flare up that rib cage. Don't dome that rib cage. Melt that, pull that belly button spine, melt the rib cage into the mat. And I lengthen opposite leg and arm away from each other. Lengthen, see if you can hold it for two, three seconds, really lengthening through the joints and slowly with control back to center. Hardly any pressure. I can really feel that in my deep core muscles already. I'm on thin ice. Can you see one arm stays lengthened up to the ceiling? As does my knee. I'm back to center. See if you can hold it for two to three seconds. Lengthen, lengthen. Three, two, one. I'm back to center. Then if you want to progress, remember really relax the muscles in the leg. Relax, relax. And I lengthen opposite leg and arm away from each other. Pulling my belly button spine, melting my rib cage into the mat, holding it for two to three seconds. Really relax the muscles in the legs and arms and lengthen through the joints. I'm trying to touch something with my toe and something with my fingers. Lengthen. Pull that belly button to the spine, slow and control. Now, if you want to progress or just try this move, you can do double dead bug, lengthening both arms over your head as you lengthen both legs away. Double dead bug. Now, as you know, the closer your legs are to the ceiling, less pressure it is on the lumbar spine. Relax those feet, relax the legs. But the closer your legs are to the mat, the more you're going to challenge your core. So you just come to a level that's good for you. You might want to try a couple of de double dead bugs. When you feel your muscles are fatiguing, you come down the level and you just do regular dead bug, either at tabletop. Once again, you can come down the level. E, you just come to the level that's good for you. We're just going to do one more either side, lengthen, lengthen. Try to switch off the muscles in the legs and the arms. Lengthen through the joints, pulling that belly button to the spine as much as you can and back to centre. Drop the band or the weights and hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. You choose the level that's good for you, whether you want to lengthen your arms over your, your legs over your head or more of a stretch working your core. If you can grab your ball, put your ball between your knees, squeeze that ball, cheer your arms with or without weights. I'm on thin ice, squeeze the ball, totally relax the feet, squeeze the ball, pull your belly back and spine, keep on squeezing. So not only do I feel that in my inner thighs, I'm pulling my belly back and spine, melting my rib cage into the mat. Can you see I'm virtually floating at my feet? That is really challenging my core. Now we're going to drop our knees to the left and right. Some of you might want to come up to the tabletop and challenge your core a little bit more, deeper stretch. Now squeeze the ball as you drop your knees to the left, look to the right, right. squeeze the ball, switch off the muscles, um, relax the feet, and all that squeeze comes from the knees. Lengthen out your top leg. Now if it's too uncomfortable to lengthen out your top leg, keep your knees bent. Look in the opposite direction, lengthen, lengthen. Squeeze the ball as you bend your knees. Squeeze the ball back center. I'm on thin ice and drop your knees over to the right. Look to the left. Squeeze that ball. Relax the feet. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Now I'm lengthening out my top leg. If you get pressure in the lumbar spine, just hold it with your knees bent. Don't lengthen out that top leg. 
squeeze the ball and back to center. Now, some of you might be at tabletop, squeezing the ball. Remember, with this one, you can come up and down the level as well. Squeeze ball, lovely deep stretch down the lateral side, but we're really working our inner thighs. Squeeze the ball back to center, and we're really working the deep core muscles. But you must relax those feet. Squeeze the ball over to the right, look to the left. Squeeze, 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 lengthen your arms at T, shoulders stay glued to the mat, and I'm just gently floating up my weight. Squeeze the ball, back to center, squeeze, 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 and then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. The next exercise we're going to do is the diamond leg lower. Now this can be done with one or two legs. So I'm gonna show you from this angle, your knees are up to tabletop. And can you see, we've done this one before, my heels are glued together and my feet are at a 90 degree angle, but my knees are still at tabletop. You can do this with one or two legs, still maintaining the same position with one foot. But if you can bring your knees up to tabletop and you're gluing your heels together, my feet are at a 90 degree angle. You're going to choose the arm position that's good for you. But I'm just going to start, my knees are at tabletop. I'm going to start with my hands on the floor. And I'm just lowering my legs to a point that's good for me. Can you see I'm still at 90 degrees? And I'm really trying to pull my knees apart. So I feel I'm using my quads, my thighs, and my glutes, as well as my core. So I'm keeping my knees at 90 degrees. I'm at tabletop. My feet are at that 90 degree angle. Heels glued together. I come down to a point. That's good for me. Stay at 90 degrees. That bent knee stays at 90 degrees. Just come to a point. That's good for you without flaring up your rib cage. So I'm going to see if I can come a little bit lower, pulling my belly button spine, melting my rib cage into the mat. And I'm really pulling my knees apart. I was meant to say. Some of you might want a little loop band around your thighs. If you want to work a little bit harder, keep those feet at 90 degrees. So some of you might come down by a couple of inches. Don't flare, you don't want to do that. You don't want to flare up your rib cage and back to center. Just come to the level that's good for you. Some of you might come down a little bit further. You choose the arm position that's good for you. At the moment, I can really feel that's in my quads the side of my thighs, I'm pulling my knees apart. I can really feel that in the glutes as well as my deep core muscles. Choose the arm position, that's good for you. So you might come down just by a few inches, that's okay. Remember, you can always come up and down the level. I'm gonna show you front of the screen. So I'm coming down, keeping my knees at 90 degrees. So I'm coming down by a few inches, or you might be able to come all the way to the floor and back up really pulling those knees apart as much as you can. I can read that literally. I feel it in the quads. I feel it in the side of my thighs, really feel it in my glutes. But I'm really feeling that in my deep core muscles. Remember, you always choose the hand position. That's good for you. We're going to do one more because my quads are absolutely burning. One more. And then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. And full body stretch, pull that belly button spine, melt the rib cage into the mat. I've got another um, supine exercise, but I'm going to might do that right at the end because we're going to go straight on to our side now, have a little rest. So here we're going to do a couple of side exercises today. You choose whether you want a loop band around your thighs or your ankle. So we're just going to do the one leg circle. So you choose whether you want to lie on your arm, head in your hands, or you know how it works, or up to your elbow. If you find you're wobbling all over the place, you just bring your bottom leg slightly out in front for stability. So you choose the level that's good for you. So really relax. We're going to lengthen and lift the top leg as high as it goes. But you don't want to imprint your, you don't want to imprint your waist into the mat. So I'm lengthening, lifting that leg, really relax that foot. And we're just doing little circles around the saucer. Now this is your own personal challenge. You rest whenever you like. 
So I'm doing little circles. Lengthen and lift that leg as high as it can go. Relax the foot. Can you see the main part of my body is not moving? The main trunk of my body. It's so cold down here, I can see um, lots of steam coming out of my mouth. Now you rest whenever you like. If you want to rest, you lengthen and lower. And then I lengthen and lift again, and I'm going to come in the opposite direction. And it's just little, we're just going around little saucers. So I'm lengthening, lengthening. You choose the arm position, that's good for you. As soon as I come up onto my elbow, it reduces my range of motion. Rules are always the same. Shoulders down my back pockets, chest out to the sun. Pelvis stays completely vertical. Glutes are burning, thighs are burning. Lengthen. I'm going to have a little rest, pat it out, and then I'm going to lengthen and lift. As high as I can go, as high as I can go. Relax the foot. All the length, come, all the length comes from the hip joints. Remember, everything, the movement comes from the hip joint. Oh, my glutes are burning now. We we'll just do a couple more. This is just going to be your final reps now. Always come down the level if you want to. This has increased my range of motion. One more and lengthen back to centre and just pack it out. We're going to do another side exercise now, but it's working our inner thighs. So you're going to bring with or without a band. Can you see my legs are lengthened? And then I step my top leg in front. So whatever is comfortable for you. So I've just stepped my top leg in front. Some of you might find that more comfortable. Your foot might be on an angle. And we're going to lengthen and lift our bottom leg. So we're working our inner thighs. So if you can even, up, your foot might be here. You're just stepping your foot in front. Your hands in front for balance. And the, I'm in between two panes of glass apart from my top leg. And that top leg there is for stability. So take a breath in as you breathe out. You lengthen and lift your bottom leg. Pull the belly button spine. Relax the foot and you're holding it. And back to centre. So that's really working my inner thigh. Take a breath in as you breathe out. I lengthen and lift. We're not going to come up onto our elbows for this one. And back to centre. You can really feel. So it's a little range of motion, but I can really feel lengthen through the hip joint. Pull the belly button to the spine. I can really feel I'm using my inner thighs there. Now, if you want to progress, you lengthen and lift as high as you can go. Very small movement, but we're going to pulse for five, four, three, two, one. Remember, you don't have to pulse. You can lengthen and lift, just holding it for two to three seconds. I'm relaxing that foot. Lengthen and lift. Really working the inner thighs, but having my leg in front, I can really feel that in the waist there. I can feel it in my deep core muscles, but I can really feel my inner thighs are working. Lengthen and lift. If you want to pulse, five, four, three, two, one, and lengthen back to centre. We'll just do a couple more. So you're either going to lengthen and lift, or you're going to pulse. Really feeling that in my inner thighs, having my foot stepped in front. Really feel that in my waist. And this is the last one. And lengthen back to centre. And just shake it out. You can take off your band. We do a chalk circle today. So with or without a weight, we're not using the band. Chalk circle is difficult with the band. So it, if chalk circle is too uncomfortable, so chalk circle is when I'm drawing a big chalk circle around my body. Now, if that's too uncomfortable with your shoulders, just do your regular open book. But this is a lovely deep stretch. Now, everyone lengthens their leg diagonally across with or without a weight in your hand. You might want to do both weights if you really want to work hard. Now, I've lengthened and lengthened my leg diagonally in front. If you want to do a little bit more glute work and thigh work, you keep it lengthened and lifted. Really relax the muscles in the leg, lengthen through the hip joint. With or without a weight, my, with or without a weight, my arms are in front. I'm lying on the edge of my block. Take a breath in. So you breathe out and lengthen my top arm, log in the bottom. And I'm drawing a big chalk circle. Try not to touch the floor. If you touch, see if you can hover your hand, if you, if you can get to the floor, 
See if you can hover your hand about an inch from the floor. So you want your waist to do the work. So either your leg is lengthened and rested, or you lengthen and lift that leg. Switch off the muscles in the leg, lengthen through the hip joint. And pretend you're drawing a big chalk circle around your body. And back to centre. If that's too uncomfortable, just do open book. Can you see I've lengthened my top arm, lengthened my bottom? And see if my head can follow my hand. My weights are actually quite heavy, so I can really feel I'm working the deep core muscles, really feel I'm working my waist there. If you haven't got any weights, maybe a bottle of water, or you just use the weight of your body, lengthening through the shoulder joints, lengthening, lifting my top leg. I can really feel that in my glutes and my thighs. We're just going to do one more. It's a lovely deep stretch. Lengthen, and I'm trying to draw a big circle around my body. I can actually touch the floor, but I don't want to because I want my waist, the muscles in my waist, to hover those weights above, uh, 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 just above the floor and just bend your knee and pat it out. We're going to go straight into classic bridge. No, we're not. We're actually doing um, uh, up in one unit and down in one unit. So we're in, if you push your block away, we're just in our normal supine feet close to our seat base. Only if you want to, you can have a Resistance band over your hips, just creating a little bit of resistance. We're going to come up and down in one unit. So squeeze your glutes, push into your heels, and you're coming up in one unit. Can you see alignment from my knees to my hips to my shoulders? And down in one unit, hovering above the mat by about an inch. Up in one unit, really taking on tension the band. I'm really working the muscles in my arms and my upper body down in one unit. Pushing into my heels, firing up my glutes, squeezing my glutes, hips up to the ceiling. And really, you can have that band as slack as tight as you want, because you're just doing some arm work, really working the muscles in your arms. Squeeze your glutes up in one unit, down in one unit. Only if you want to progress, you do this one with one leg. Up in one unit, down in one unit. Up in one unit. Rest whenever you like and come back into position. I'm going to swap over legs with some of you who are doing it with one leg, pushing into your heels, squeezing your glutes up in one unit and down in one unit. Some of you might have both your soles, your feet on the mat, up in one unit, down in one unit. And because I've got that band quite tight around my hips, I can really feel I'm working the muscles especially in my biceps, really working the muscles in my arms, squeeze my glutes, pushing into my heels, you're not coming onto your tiptoes, this will be the final one, and down in one unit, hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side, pulling your knees apart, or some of you might want to come a little bit further, or even further, so you choose a level that's good for you. And then full body stretch. Pull your belly button to the spine. Melt your rib cage into the mat. As we roll over to the side, we're going to do the opposite side. So you choose whether you want a loop band around your thighs. So we're going to start with the one leg circle. So I'm in between that double glazing. Only if you want to, you can lengthen your bottom leg in front for stability, stops you from rocking everywhere. Remember, the main trunk of your body is not going to move, and that pelvis needs to stay completely vertical. So we're going to lengthen and lift our leg and do little circles around the saucer. So I'm going to lengthen and lift, relax that foot, lengthen and lift, as high as it can go. But you don't want to imprint your waist, and I'm lengthening through the hip joint, relaxing the foot. And I'm just doing little circles around the saucer. Now, this is your own personal challenge. Relax the foot and the leg. All the movement comes from the hip joint. I've completely switched off the muscles in my leg. And I can really feel that in the glutes and my thighs. Total stability of the main trunk of my body. I'm not leaning back or forward. 
Now you rest whenever you like. You lengthen and lower, lengthen, 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 have a little rest and you lengthen and lift. Switch off the muscles in the leg and you come in the opposite direction. Total stability, complete stability. The only thing that's moving is my leg and my hip joint. All the movement comes from my hip joint. I'm not circling my foot. I'm not circling my knee. All that movement comes from my hip joint. I can really feel that in the glute. You choose the leg position, that's good. For, the arm position, that's good for you. Remember, this decreases my range of motion when I come up onto my elbow. But I can certainly feel it in my glutes and my thighs. Or you might want to challenge yourself a little bit more and hold on to your temples. Now, can you rest whenever you like? This will be the final one. But can you see the main trunk of my body? Only my leg is moving. My pelvis stays completely vertical. Chest out to the sun, shoulders down my back pockets. And I'm just going around a little source of glutes. Thighs are burning. This is my just final set of reps. Lift up that waist. I'm dropping my waist. And just lengthen and lower your leg and just tap it out. So I'm, we're all lying down now in between two panes of glass. You step your foot in front. So some of you might find it more comfortable to have your leg up here. I find, I was taught you meant to hold on to your foot like this, and I find that really uncomfortable personally. But some of you might want to hold on to your, sorry, not foot, your ankle. But just come to the range of motion that's good for you. So you might step your foot um, slightly closer to your opposite ankle or just a little bit higher. Just you just want to be nice and comfortable. So I'm in between two panes of glass top, apart from my top leg. So take a breath in, so we're working our inner thighs. Take a breath in, so you breathe out and lengthen and lift my inner leg. Relax the foot, lengthen and lift through the hip joint and back to center. Take a breath in and lengthen and lift. See if you can hold it for two to three seconds, pull the belly button to the spine. Not only can I feel that in my inner thighs, I really relax my leg and my foot, lengthen and lift. I can really feel I'm working my deep core muscles just lengthening, lifting that bottom leg. Lengthen and lift. See if you can hold it for two to three seconds, or you might want to pulse for five, four, three, two, one, and lengthen back to center. Lengthen and lift. Five, four, three, two, one. And remember, just come to the level that's good for you. You might be able to lengthen and lift your leg by a couple of centimeters. Come back down. Well, you might be able to come a bit higher. You might be okay to do a few pulses. If not, hold it for two to three seconds. Always lengthening through the joints. I can really feel that in my inner thighs now. Lengthen back center. We'll do a couple more. Lengthen the lift. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to do one more. Really feeling that in my inner thighs now. Five, four. Three, two, one, and lengthen back to center and just shake it out. And then we come into chalk circle. So with chalk circle, we can't really use the bound. So just use weights or nothing at all. So it's a lovely deep stretch, but with the weights, you're gonna work your waist a little. Uh, with the weights, you're gonna work your waist a lot more. So bend your knees in front. As always, your shins are in line with the edge of the mat. Your arms are in front, palm to palm. Now you either lengthen that leg diagonally across and keep it rested, or if you want to do a little bit more glute and thigh work, you keep it really relaxed and you lengthen and lift it at hip height. You're on the edge of your block like you always are. Take a breath in as you breathe out, you lengthen your top arm, lengthen your bottom, and you draw a big circle, chalk circle around your body. Try not to touch. If, you, if you're able to touch the floor, try not to touch it. Keep your weight or your hand hovered above the floor because it's my waist, the muscles in my waist that are keeping those weights hovered above the floor. Always lengthening through your joint. Pelvis stays completely there, so I'm going to have to drop the weight there. So I'm lengthening my arms away from each other, lengthening my leg diagonally across, my pelvis stays vertical. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. 
As I was saying, if it's too uncomfortable, just do your normal open book, opening and closing. It's still a lovely deep stretch using the muscles in your waist. <sighs> opening up my chest, I'm lengthening my arms away from each other here. We'll just do one more, drawing a big chalk circle. If you can, keep that leg lengthen and lifted. Switch off the muscles in the leg, lengthen through the hip joint. Final one, and then bend your knee and just pass it out. We're going to go straight into prone dart today. So you can do it with or without weight. So I'm under, no, I'm not going to do weights because um, I've got weights around my wrists. So with dart, our legs are mat width apart. And we're going to have our hands down by our sides, down by our thighs. Look down in the mirror, push your pubic bone into the mat, pull your belly button to the spine. And I'm going to take you through the progressions. So you're going to length, roll the marble forward. You lengthen and lift your head and sternum, lengthening your, uh, your hands down your thighs as your shoulders come down your back pocket. Lengthen and lift and back to centre. So really feel about using the muscles in your upper back. If this is all too uncomfortable, I want you to do the regular diamond, lengthening, lifting your head and sternum. So I'm going to roll the marble forward, push my pubic bone into the mat, pull my belly button spine, lengthen and lift my head and sternum, lengthening my arms down my thighs and back to centre. Now if you feel you can progress, you're going to roll the marble forward, look down in the mirror, lengthen and lift your head and sternum, and you lengthen and lift your hands as high as they can go, but try to push your palms together. So I'm lengthening, lifting my head and sternum, my arms, trying to push my palms together and back to centre. Take a breath in, I'll roll the marble forward, lengthen and lift my head and sternum, shoulders down my back pockets, and I'm trying to lengthen and lift my arms. And back to centre, pushing my palms together, dart. Take a breath in. If you want to progress even further, you can incorporate one leg. Lengthen and lift your head and sternum. Lengthen and your, lift your arms. Trying to push my palms together. Lengthen and lift one leg. And back to centre. And then you do the other leg. Or you might want to progress and you lengthen and lift both legs. Lengthen and lift my arms. Trying to push my palms together. Lengthen and lift in my head and sternum. So you choose the level that's good for you. Remember, you can always come up and down a level. So I've done double leg lift, lengthen, lift my arms. I want to come down a level. So I'm just going to do one leg only as I lengthen and lift my head and sternum and my hands and my arms. Or you just can do your arms and head and sternum only. Just do your final one either side. The level that's good for you. Always holding it for two to three seconds. And back to centre. Everyone has their hands at capital E, so my elbows are in line with my shoulders. And you're going to rock your hips from side to side. Just releasing any tension you're holding in the lumbar spine. So we're just going to do cobra prep now and turn it into lizard like we do every week. Lovely deep stretch. Make sure your feet are mat width apart. Take a breath in as so you breathe out. You roll the marble forward with your nose. You lengthen and lift your head and sternum. At the moment, I've got hardly any pressure under my hands. Chest out to the sun, shoulders down your back pockets. Now I'm thinking about pushing my elbows back. They're not actually going to move, but I'm pushing my elbows back even though they're not moving. It helps me extend my spine. Chest out to the sun, shoulders down your back pockets. Pushing my elbows back and lengthen back to centre. We're going to turn this into lizard, so I roll the marble forward. Lengthen and lift my head and sternum, shoulders down my back pockets. Pushing into those elbows, even though they're not moving, so it feels like I'm extending my spine a little bit more. Now I'm pushing into my left hand, looking over my left shoulder, pushing into my left hip, 
right elbow glued to the mat. Push into that left hip and really look over that shoulder and lengthen back to centre. We'll do the other side. Roll the marble forward. Lengthen and lift your head and sternum. Shoulders down your back pockets, chest out to the sun. I'm pushing my elbows back, even though they're not moving. Now I'm pushing into my right hand. Looking over my right shoulder. Push into your right hip. Left elbow, glue to the mat. Really look over that shoulder and lengthen back to centre. We're going to see if we can get our elbows off the mat now. It doesn't matter if you cannot. If you want to deepen your spinal extension, you have your hands underneath your shoulders, elbows tucked into your ribcage. Now roll the marble forward, lengthen and lift my head and sternum. Now pushing into my palms, trying to get my elbows off the mat. Legs at soft feet, pull the belly button to the spine, chest out to the side. If your hands are underneath your shoulders, you have a deeper spinal extension. Keep those hips glued to the mat, the pelvis is glued to the mat. And lengthen, lengthen back to centre. Everyone puts their hands underneath their shoulders and come up to four point kneeling. Make sure you're stacked. We're just going to do a cat and a cow. So first of all, we're going to start with a cow today. Sticking out your bottom, squeeze a tennis ball between your shoulder blades. Cow. And then we're rounding our spine, squeeze, pulling our belly button spine, squeezing our glutes, pushing into your palms, lifting your chin into your chest for a cat. Only if you want to, turbo cat. You're going to see if you can just hover your knees two centimetres off the mat, really rounding that spine. So this is a little bit more cool work. Pretty difficult, but I love the name turbo cat. Or just keep it at regular cat. Knees come to the mat. One more cow, stick out your bottom, squeeze a tennis ball between your shoulder blades and round your spine, pull your belly button spine, squeeze your glutes, push into your palm, dip your chin to your chest. Some of you might want to seek out your spine still, hovering your knees two centimetres off the mat, really seek out your spine, pulling your belly button spine. It is quite difficult, this one. It's called Turbo Cat and I absolutely love the name. And back to centre. We're going to go straight into, uh, it's, it's four point kneeling swimming. And um, with a little bit, so this is slightly different. We've done this one before. It's actually called bird dog. And we're going to lengthen and lift our opposite arm and leg away from each other. And can you see my thumb? You do it on the other side. Can you see my thumb is pointing up to the ceiling? And you're going to push into your heel today. So I'm going to lengthen. Remember, if it's too much, you can just do it with your leg only. I lengthen and lift my leg and arm away from each other, opposite leg and arm. Can you see I'm pushing into my heel today, trying to float that leg as high as it can go, and trying to float in my hand as high as it can go. Thumb up to the ceiling and back to centre. See if you can hold it for two to three seconds. You can do this with or without a band. Some of you might want to hold it maybe for four or five seconds. You don't have to incorporate your arm. You can just do your legs. Or the opposite way around for those with knee problems, just do your hands. Can you see I'm thumbing my fist, thumbing my fist up to the ceiling and now I'm pushing into my heel, trying to lengthen and lift those legs as high as they can go. Holding it for two to three seconds, a bit longer if you can, with or without the band. So if I do the band, I wrap the band around my thumb, and I'm pushing into my heel, lengthening, lifting my arm, thumb in my fist, really floating my, trying to get my thumb up to the ceiling, pushing into my heel, and back to centre. Remember, some of you, might just want to incorporate the leg only, pushing into your heel, floating up that leg as high as it goes. If you have knee problems, you're just going to do your arms only. With or without a band. I actually find I don't use it, I don't need a band with this one. So I'm lengthening, lifting opposite leg and arm. My thumb is floating up to the ceiling and I'm pushing into my heel. Try to lengthen the lift as high as you can go, hold it. 
for two to three seconds, maybe a little bit longer if you can. So I'm lengthening my leg and arm away from each other. It doesn't matter if you just come a few inches above uh, off the mat, you might be able to come a little bit higher. Just push into my heel, looking down in the mirror, total stability. You can really feel that in the glutes and the shoulders. Lengthen and lift, opposite arm and leg, pushing into the heel. Thumb up to the ceiling, really, really. Trying to float up that thumb, push into that heel. And I'm finding this really tricky, total stability. Knees and mat hip width apart, shoulders, hands are shoulder width apart. Just gonna do a couple more. Holding it, pushing into the heel. Do one more. Thumb, can you see my thumb is floating up to the ceiling? Pushing into that heel. And final one. If everyone can come back into a child's pose, if you can have your knees mat width apart, gluing your big toes together, great. If not, you can glue your knees together, that's fine. And lengthen your arms forward. Lengthen your arms forward, push into your chest, sit on your heels. And if you push your chest into the mat, I want you to see if you can get your forehead on the mat, and you're just gonna sway your hips from side to side. Rocking from side to side, so you're just massaging out to your forehead, just getting your breath back. Now just walk your hands over to 10 o'clock. Right hand sits on left. And I keep on, I keep on walking those hands away, pushing into my chest, sitting on my heels. Especially that right hand, walk it away so you feel a deep stretch down your right side. Then walk over to 12, really lengthen forward, still trying to sit on your heels, and walk over to two. Left hand on right, walk those hands away, feel a deep stretch down my left side. I'm pushing my chest into the mat, trying to sit on my heels, walking those hands forward, feeling a lovely deep stretch down my left side, and step over to 12. And then C curve that spine, squeeze the glutes. I'm really C curve my spine and come into four point kneeling. So we're going to do thread the needle. An exercise we do every week. There's a lovely deep stretch, and with the band, incorporating the band or just your body weight, it strengthens as well. And as I will say, holding a stretch will strengthen. So, first of all, with or without a band, your right hand lengthens out to the side or up to the ceiling is your range of motion, but your hips are set in stone. Rotation of your upper spine only. Open up your chest, squeeze your shoulder blades together, and lengthen your arm back to center. Lengthen, lengthen, keep that arm lengthened. Pull your belly button to the spine. When your hand gets down to the mat, then you can thread your right arm underneath your left, push into your left hand, Hip set in stone, rotation of your upper spine only. Only if you want to, you can lengthen and lengthen and lift your left leg. Remember, it's a progression. Your hips have to stay totally flat, totally horizontal. You can, if you don't want to lengthen and lift your leg behind you, you might want to try and swing your left leg out to the side only. Keep it nice and straight as you unthread your right arm out to the side or up to the ceiling. It's your range of motion with or without a band. I'm really lengthening my arms away from each other, opening up my chest, squeezing my shoulder blades together and lengthen back to center. Don't bend your arm yet, lengthen back to center, lengthen, lengthen through the shoulder joints. And back to center and your leg comes back to center. Now your left hand lengthens out to the side or up to the ceiling, it's your range of motion. And can you see my hips are set in stone? This is rotation of my upper spine only. So you might be here, you might be a bit deeper, with or without a band, might have a weight too. Now we're gonna lengthen back center, don't bend your arm yet, lengthen, lengthen, keep it lengthen, feel your work in your waist, lengthen, lengthen. Then when my hand gets down to the mat, I thread my left hand underneath my right, pushing into my right hand, really feel I'm rotating my upper spine, 
only if you want to, you can lengthen and lengthen and lift that right leg, but it is a progression. You can swing it out to the side as you unthread your left arm out to the side, up to the ceiling. Keep that leg nice and straight, feeling a deep stretch in your inner thighs. So your arm might be here, that's okay. You might be a bit deeper. Push into the supporting hand on the mat. Helps you open up your chest and lengthen back centre. Keep that arm lengthened. Try to relax the hand and lengthen through the shoulder joints. Then you feel it more in the waist. And back to centre. Come to the side and we slowly roll down. If you're feeling tired, you can just slowly roll down on the side. Or you can roll down with the assistance of your band. We do this every week, level one two or three. Really work your core muscles. Lean back, bound inch, tapping your pelvis. Relax the feet, relax the legs, pull your belly button spine, scoop the pelvis. And slowly roll down. Remember to breathe. And I'm really scooping the pelvis, tucking the tailbone under, really feeling it in my deep core muscles. But as I will say, this trains you to be really, to get a really flexible spine. And then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. You choose the level that's good for you. Cross your ankles, pull your knees apart. Or you might want to go a little bit deeper. Or if you've never tried this before, see if you can get your, you can hug your knees to your chest and slowly lengthen them. Now, if you grab a band, we'll just stretch it out. Put the band underneath the arch of your right foot. Left leg can be bent, slightly extended or fully extended. Just push into your heel. <sighs> Lengthen through the hip joint. <sighs> so again, your range of motion could be here, could be slightly deeper. Just relax, really relax the deeper. The more you relax, the deeper the stretch. Bring your right foot out to the side, T your left. And bring your foot back to centre using your core. So I'm trying not to pull on the band. I'm squeezing my glutes, pulling my belly button into the spine. Put the band in the left hand to your right. To your arms, keep your shoulders glued to the mat. Again, your range of motion might be here. So your shoulders need to stay glued to the mat. But keep on lengthening through the hip joints. And really keep it, I'm keeping my arms at T, lengthening through the hip joints. I feel a lovely deep stretch down my side. And I'm holding that stretch, I'm still strengthening. And lengthen back to center. And we swap over. Right leg bent, slightly extended or fully extended. Really relaxing those muscles, pushing into the heel. Relax, relax. Pushing into the heel. And just bring your foot out to the left, to your right. Again, just always come to a point. Don't overdo it. You want to feel comfortably challenged. Don't want any pressure on the lumbar spine. You don't want to overstretch your muscles. Lengthen back to centre, using your core to the left. Put the band on the right hand. Keep those shoulders glued to the mat. But keep on lengthening through the shoulder joints. Lengthen through your hip joint. I'm feeling a lovely deep stretch all down my side now. And lengthen back to centre. Drop the band, left ankle on right thigh. Really relax that right foot. Hug your knee to your chest and you can feel a deep stretch in your left glute. Really relax the muscles so you can hug the knee to the chest a little bit more. Breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. We're all going to lengthen our legs up to the ceiling if you can. Then right ankle on left thigh, really relax the left foot. Really relax, hugging the knee to the chest. Feeling a deep stretch in my right glute. Relax, relax. And if you just gently put your foot down, remove your block and take your ball. We're just going to press it into the ball for eight seconds, releasing tension you hold in your head, neck and shoulders. Remember your double chin and to breathe. So take a breath in. 
As you breathe out, you push. And release. And again, take a breath in. As you breathe out, you push. And release. And one more, take a breath in. As you breathe out, you push. And release. And just gently rock your head from side to side, sway your head from side to side. Really relax the muscles in your neck. And see if you can deepen the stretch using the ball. Just bring in your head over to the left tonight and then back to center. And just focus on your breath. And when you're ready, if you gently roll to the side and get yourself to seated in your own time, slowly, slowly. You can sit on your block to get that nice neutral pelvis, pubic bone, hip bone, completely vertical. We'll just stretch out our hips and our waist. Shoulders down your back pockets, chest out to the sun, so we're lengthening up. Top your bodies in between that double glazing, keep the arm lengthened, not bent. Keep it lengthened, stay weighted in your seat bones. Lengthen over, keep that weight in your seat bones. And then look down at the mat, lengthen forward. Feeling a deep stretch down one side of your back. Keep the arm lengthened. Open up, chest out to the sun, shoulders down your back pockets. Pull your belly button spine and lengthen back to center. And we'll do the other side. Keep the arm lengthened, don't bend it. So I'm staying weighted, keeping that arm lengthened. I can feel a really deep stretch down my waist. Open up the chest, shoulders down the back pockets, and then I lengthen forward. Keep the arm nice and lengthened. Feeling a deep stretch on one side of my back. Chest out to the sun, shoulders down the back pocket. Pull the belly button spine as you bring your hand back to center. We're going to come to four point kneeling, tapping our to toes under. For some of you who have spinal issues, you're gonna step up like that. The rest of us, tap our toes under. Pilates stance. Let the top of your body hang. Heels glued together. Feet at a 90 degree angle. Really let the top of your body hang. Knees a slight micro bend. Now you're going to squeeze your glutes, push into your heels, and slowly restack your spine. Let the top of your body hang and feel your deep core muscles doing the work. So I'm really pulling my belly button to the spine and restacking my spine one vertebrae at a time. So not only are you working your deep core muscles there, you're really teaching your spine to be flexible again. So we lengthen up and we're going to do some arm circles. We're going to lengthen up to the ceiling, squeezing our shoulder blades together, opening up our chest. Only if you want to, you can come on to your tiptoes and soles your feet. Or you can stay on your tiptoes, focus on a point out in front. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, open up your chest. We'll just do one more. Lengthen, lengthen, keep the arms lengthen, lengthen through the shoulder blades and back to center. 